Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm so excited because we have Susan Taylor with us. She is a coach and a facilitator, and she's going to talk about mindset today. I'm very excited. And I just want to remind you that she's part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our station. So check her podcast out, and she has amazing episodes, and she talks about a lot of different things that have to do with helping yourself grow and advance in your, in your life like mindset and other things related to it. So, you know, I'm not going to waste any time because I really want to hear about your topic today because I just, I love the topic of mindset. So, you know, Susan, tell us a little about yourself and tell us a little about why mindset matters. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you again for the invitation to be with you. Yes. So I am a transformational mindset coach and facilitator. Um, And there's a reason for that and why I love talking about mindsets matter. They do, they do. So I'm gonna give a real example as a way to maybe demonstrate that. Um, Oftentimes when I'm with groups of people that I work with, I'll ask them, what's the one thing that everybody believed about the Titanic? And most people know the answer to that. It's that it would never sink, it would never sink. And yet it did. But here's the thing that I think is very interesting uh, from some of the survivors and the, different stories that those survivors wrote about. They talked about this idea that people would feel safer on a sinking steel ship than they would getting into a small wooden life raft or lifeboat in the middle of the Northern Atlantic because they truly believed despite that that ship was sinking and that was their current reality, they truly believed it wouldn't sink. And so with that mindset, they stayed on the ship and of course went down with it. And there's a belief in these testimonials from the survivors that had people been able to actually see that reality and or shift that mindset in that moment, we would not have lost so much human life at sea. So while it's a tragedy and a dramatic example, I think it's a really powerful example about how strong those mindsets can be for us. Oh, definitely, definitely. And why is mindset crucial in in our personal and our and our um also professional lives because you know it really it, you know when you have a certain mindset if you can really program your mind to think a certain way it can it could help you advance in your personal life it could help you advance in your professional life you know what you know what are some of the uh, crucial components and uh, how you could change in such a positive way if we really change our mindset so I want to um, make certain that people who are listening, you know, can understand that those mindsets that might be unhealthy or fixed are not necessarily bad mindsets and other mindsets are not necessarily good mindsets. And I think that's really important to understand and to give a real simple example, I might have a fixed mindset, fixed meaning I'm not really willing to change it because it actually works for me and I've decided it works for me. So I might hold the mindset, for example, that if I put my hand on um, a stovetop that has, you know, a flame on it, I'm going to get burned. That's a mindset that I want to keep, even though it's fixed, right? Because Mm -hmm. when we then look at the other side of that coin, what we call growth mindsets, they're more about learning and being open to different perspectives or open to different ways of seeing the world. So to specifically answer your question, I I do think that there are mindsets that we hold from our own experiences and the past and how we were raised and schooled that maybe don't serve us in our lives and business. And those are the mindsets that we might want to consider shifting. Those are the mindsets that we might want to consider um, moving over to a growth mindset, if you will, if you will. And I think a really good example of that, again, is someone by the name of Roger Bannister, a British gentleman who ran um, a mile in less than four minutes for the first time ever in 1954, despite the fact that his coaches, his doctors, everybody that he worked with said it was humanly impossible to run a mile in less than four minutes. He did it and he did it because he believed in the possibility of it, despite what he knew about what it means to run on a windy day or on asphalt versus a field. So those mindsets that worked for him, he keeps. But he did shift with regard to, I know I can do this and it's possible. I just feel it. And he believed it Yeah. and he did it. And what's really cool is that since then, thousands of people have run a mile 
in less than four minutes. That's a whole nother conversation, but I think it really points to how when we can shift those perspectives, shift those views, it does open us up to uh, making what we felt was impossible possible. You know, how, you know, it's, it's hard for a lot of people to shift their, their, um, their fixed behaviors, because a lot of times people get stuck in a certain way of living and they, they might be in an environment where people do the same thing. And it, it's very hard to, you know, just when you have a habit or a behavior to shift it, what are some ways that we could actually shift our, our, our mindset so we could actually, you know, make ourselves, you know, improve our lives, you know, Absolutely. I think the first thing is we have to notice our thoughts and be and, and be more aware around how we think and what we're thinking. So noticing for me is is the, the, the first step. And I would I would offer maybe a fundamental step. And then once I notice my thoughts, maybe I could just get into a little bit of inquiry around those thoughts to try to understand more deeply for myself whether they're actually working for me in ways that help propel me toward my goals or my vision or my dream. And as part of that, get a little rational around it. Like what evidence is supporting that mindset? Right. So for example, a lot of people, especially in business, because we're paid to know the answer, we get the answer wrong. Our mindset indicates I have failed. Mm -hmm. And what if I could shift that instead to I have failed to, wow, I learned something. And in that learning, I know, better what to do next time. So that's a way that I think we can have these kind of in, inquiries around the mindsets with ourselves. And then lastly, to your point earlier, you know, it's hard. So be compassionate with yourself. Understand that you didn't form the mindset overnight. It's taken a long time to kind of get embedded and, and become fixed. So give yourself some ease and grace and, and, some, cap, and, and some compassion to actually, you know, be willing to work with these different ways that we think and feel. Um, it's it's hard work. And so it takes time. And yeah, you'll definitely get there if you have the willingness to be open about it and try to reframe things. And, and what are some ways that we can reframe things? Are there some exercises that we can do at home or with a professional that would help us reframe our mindset? Absolutely. So definitely, and I'm biased, but definitely working with a coach or mentor definitely helps because um, or someone you trust, right? Someone you trust really, really deeply because other people can tend to see things in me that I don't see myself because we all have blind blind sites, blind spots, yeah. I should say, blind spots, myself included. Um, so to work with someone to help us, you know, see things again that we can't see, I think is is really important. But also getting into the to the idea of like, how could I say this differently? I think a lot of times, at least in my experience and, and in my industry as a coach and facilitator, we're pretty hard on ourselves. Our self-talk is more negative than positive most of the time. So how can I actually notice that and then decide I'm actually going to give myself a little bit of love, <laughs> right? Um, yes. I think that's important. I think that's really important too. Yeah, I think in our society, we focus on the negative, you know, and also it, you, it, we're, we're prone to focus on the negative. When you look back in your childhood years and you go all the way back, you, you remember more negative things than you do the positive things. And then we have an environment that, especially in the media, that focuses more on the negative because it get people draw to it. For some reason, people draw to negativity. But, you know, if you're going to improve your life and if you're going to elevate to new levels of life and you're going to make yourself a better person, you need to really focus on the positive. You know, how do you get yourself out of that negativity mode and get yourself more into a positive mode where you're focusing on the positive things in your life or the positive things you can do in your life rather than focus on all these negative things? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a reason why I think media in particular, which is something you mentioned, um, actually help us continue to think in those more negative patterns. Why? Because there's a really biological component to it as well. Mm -hmm. Our brain is wired for negativity because uh, that's where our fight, flight, freeze response comes in. And if you think about, you know, survival of a species, we have yeah. to survive. <laughs> so that's another way to have a little compassion for ourselves too, right? Because it is also biological. It's not any one thing. It's not something I'm uh, doing wrong 100%. It's not something that's only emotional or behavioral. It's biological as well. Mm -hmm. um, in that connection, I oftentimes will just remember stories, for example, 
like the Roger Bannister story, uh, when I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, this is just impossible. This is just impossible. Maybe I'll remember that story and I'll say, well, actually, maybe it isn't. And I'll remember what, what he did. And again, how that links to something that was allegedly humanly impossible, where now thousands of people have run a sub four minute mile today. So it's almost like he gave permission in a way <laughs> for it to be able to happen. So how can I give myself permission to explore different ways? And instead of saying that's impossible, using a, a little bit of a meme or a cliche, I'm a possible. Or how yeah. can I trust that something can um, be a learning instead of just like deeming it a failure? And right. then how is modeling that and becoming that then not only inform my life and business, but create opportunities just like Roger Bannister to give other people in a way permission to do the same. Right. I I love it. And, and you know, when, when people, you know, um, uh, use, try to start to change their mind, start and start, start, start to focus on a different way of thinking and reacting, you know, what are, what are some of the common mindsets that can, can, you know, um, hinder a person as well? Cause you're trying to change your mindset, but what are some of the things that pulls you back sometimes into that old behavior? Cause a lot of times people try to change themselves and they do sometimes for a little bit, but then they get drawn back into their old ways or old ways of thinking, you know, how do you stay on a, a focused mindset and how do you, you know, continue to move forward when a lot of times we tend to things trigger us and we tend to move backwards? It's a great question because as human beings, we're very habitual yeah. <laughs> and our comfort level is where our comfort level is. And oftentimes we do get pulled backwards. At the same time, um, I thought you might ask a similar question. And I pulled a few examples that you know come up in my business a lot. Um, but before I go there, I think there's two things to just remember. The word itself, mindset, kind of gives us the impression that they're set. The good news is they're not. And Roger Bannister is proof of that in the example today. But I also think there's a responsibility to be willing to change our mindset. So good news is they're not set. And I believe we have the responsibility to change them. So think about um, maybe someone who's not very happy right now in his or her work environment. So right. he or she gets up in the morning and they're like, I have to go to work. I don't feel like it. It comes with like, this energetic of a burden or some sort of negative connotation. But what if I were to notice that in myself? And and because motivation is not intrinsic. We have to work at it. It's not yeah. natural to us. So what if I'm sitting there, you know, kind of feeling sorry for myself that I actually have to go to work and instead could actually see, well, wait a minute, what are the positive sides of going to work? right? I get to go to work, which actually helps me to support myself and or my family and or the things that I care about, or maybe a certain lifestyle. Maybe it helps me travel and take a vacation with people I love. Maybe it helps me start to explore different meaningful career goals. So I think there's just ways to kind of flip it. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I like to teach when I'm working with people. How can we just turn it upside down? Yeah. Like turn the frown upside down in a way, right? <laughs> so flipping is a definite tool that people use a lot. I mean, one more example uh, links to something we talked about earlier, but I failed at this task. Well, I just believe that you succeed and you learn, right? Because a failing is an opportunity to learn. So, oh, I learned something important from this experience. Yes. Not only can I apply it next time, but maybe I could teach it to somebody else like a child or someone that I'm, you know, mentoring in my business, those sorts of things. Yeah, I love that. You know, I think that's a great way to look at things because a lot of people don't look at things like that when when they when they don't succeed in something that they attempted to do, they immediately think of themselves as a failure. And a lot of people will give up and they'll just stop. And if you look at it as, you know, I learned from this, you know, and, and take something positive out of it, they will actually, you know, give you more knowledge and experience and more motivation to do it a different way next time. And then, you know, you could even be anxious to try to see how the new way that you created, you know, from your old experience, you know, how it works, you know, now, okay, I learned that X, Y, and Z doesn't work. So maybe I should, you know, implement this and this and this instead and see mm -hmm. if this 
you know, this is going to be a more profitable or a more successful, you know, outcome. And, you know, it can motivate you in a sense, if you look at it in that sense, but if you look at yourself as a failure, oh, I failed. Uh, I'm worthless. I'm, you know, I'm no good. You know, this is not for me. You know, I tried, you know, and you give up, you know, that's a whole different story. And then that, you know, that happens to so many people, you know, and I think sometimes it goes back to, you know, their self-worth or their self-esteem or maybe things that were told to them as they were growing up, you know, um, you know, how do you change that? You know, because that's a part of mindset too, is changing your self-worth and changing your self-esteem. Are there things people can do to enhance their self-esteem, maybe even exercises at home. So when they do, you know, fail at something and it doesn't happen exactly the way they do, you know, they they can use these exercises to make themselves feel better. So they they realize, no, I'm not a failure. I tried, you know, and, I, and for me, I, I don't even like the word failure because I think of it, you know, if you have the the courage to try, even though it may not work out the way you want it to work out, you still succeeded because you tried, but you learned, you know, it may not have happened. The outcome may not have been exactly the way you wanted it, but you learned from it. And you should give yourself a pat on the back because you actually attempted to try it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you said one of the words that immediately came to my mind, you said exercise. So physical exercise, it's definitely something. And I know you didn't mean it in that way per se, but it just reminded me about, you know, the importance of moving. I think especially now where, you know, maybe more, maybe more of us perhaps are working more remotely in home offices. Mm -hmm. It feels a little more convenient, I think, to kind of just stay in the pajamas and, you know, sit in front of the screen and we don't get up and move as much as we used to perhaps. So definitely exercise, get up, move outdoors. How often do you get outdoors? Right. You know, um, so much research has been done with regard to even like a computer, the brain needs a reboot. And we need fresh air. We need to get out of, you know, the boxes that we put ourselves in, whether it's an office, a cubicle, or, you know, our bedroom working from home. Um, we've got to get outside, take some breaths. Uh, that leads me also to think about, you know, what kind of way are we balancing our time and energy in ways that both fuel us and support others? Because if we're constantly over-indexing one side or the other, that can tend to drain us. And then that links to, you know, not having that motivation or that curiosity perhaps to maybe question a certain mindset. And then one last thing I think about a lot, and this links again to the question you raised earlier about, you know, how do we stay motivated to actually ask ourselves whether a mindset or a way of being is working for us or not? And one of the things that I like to think about is, look, we're trained more to serve other than ourselves. Mm -hmm. So as a way to start, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for other. And the way I think about that is how am I showing up, for example, in front of my children, if with this fixed mindset, and how is that helping them? Or how am I showing up, you know, as a, a boss or a mentor to a younger worker in my company? And how is my fixed mindset that feels unhealthy serving that person? So mm -hmm. if you can't start for yourself, I think, because again, the way we're trained and socialized, then start for other. And then both will come together because they're, 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 they're one in the same. I like that. I like that a lot. And I like that you mentioned exercise. I, I hear from so many people when they exercise and they, they get up early and they exercise, they feel like a new person. They feel, they feel they're, they're focused. They feel, uh, you know, energetic and motivated. And it, it's just, a, they, they just feel a feeling of greatness, you know, and when people meditate in the morning, I hear that they feel more focused and they feel more clarity and they are just, you know, they have more motivation to accomplish more things rather than when they don't meditate, you know, it, it gives them a clear perspective of the things they need to do and get done and who they are and what they're capable of doing. And so it puts them on a, on a productive mindset for the day. And, and, you know, I think those are, those are things too, that, that help with mindset also. And, you know, are there, you know, you mentioned the, the one gentleman, um, are there other resources that people can go to, to help them learn how to, you know, really change their mindset in a more productive manner so they can enhance their lives? 100%. In fact, the first person that comes to mind is Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K, Carol Dweck. 
I believe she's with Stanford and she is, um, at least in my experience and understanding, one of the very first to write about this idea of fixed and growth mindsets. Mm -hmm. um, so if you even research, you know, mindset matters or um, research her, you'll get a bunch of different ways, not only to learn about how the mindsets that we hold shape our lives and form our worldview, but how when we're attached to that worldview, uh, if it's one that isn't healthy and it's one that keeps bringing us back to, you know, um, self-sabotage or a lack of motivation, um, it's it's that sort of thing that's going to hinder or um, help us excel with regard to our own performance and how that can link to business. So Carol Dweck, definitely, she's written books. Uh, you can Google her and find out all kinds of information. And um, again, just looking at this idea of, you know, what could it be to shift, I guess, in simplest terms, I wake up in the morning, you know, you hear this thing about the proverbial bad hair day. <laughs> uh, wake up in the morning, I'm having a bad hair day, or I wake up and I, again, another um, phrase, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. What if in noticing that right now and then, I could actually shift it before I even get into the shower kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's just important. It links to the, one of the first sessions we had about know thyself. And these two things are so interconnected. Yeah. And the more I know myself, my strengths, my overuse of strengths, what triggers me. And lastly, I think that the more I can talk about what I label as my mistakes, yeah. the more it helps me just be able to accept them. And the fact that as a human being, I'm imperfect and I'm right. perfect in imperfection. So, yeah, I think talking about mistakes works as well. And also making a choice and taking responsibility for the fact that I'm not going to have a bad hair day today. <laughs> 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 love, love that. now what made you so compassionate about mindset in your own personal mm -hmm. life you know is are there things in your life that that impacted you to have such compassion and such a need to help others with mindset 100 percent, absolutely so i've always been interested in why human beings do what they do so i have a history with regard to psychology and psychotherapy and of course that morphed into my my coaching um, and mindsets have always played a role there. Where it got real interesting was when I was on my very, very, very first cruise, which was um, a celebration of, of my birthday. I'd never been on a cruise ship before um, in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. And of course, the Titanic came to mind. And so as that was going on for me, especially on the last night of our cruise, we got called back to sea as we were trying to head back into port because a small craft was in distress and we had to be part of a search and rescue in these like 30 foot waves. Um, oh. So it really amplified that for me. And it's then that I started to do the research about whether mindsets played a role, how they played a role. And where I found a book, again, that contained testimonials from survivors that basically said, yes, it played a significant role and that really kind of, you know, added to the, to, to the, you know, passion and the um, experience that I already had with how they shape our lives. They're not who we are. Mindsets yeah. shape our lives, but the decisions that come from those mindsets and the importance of understanding why we're making those decisions and where they're coming from. I think that's wonderful. You know, is you know, it's, it's, when when you change you change your mindset, it could take so much stress off you also because a lot of times we we get into situations where it could be um a stressful situation and you get overwhelmed, you get anxious, you might have anxiety. But if you take a moment to breathe and calm down and then change your mindset and 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 change the way you're thinking about the situation, I think that also could help with you know helping people get out of that anxious mode, get out of you know to to reduce that level of of you know of uh, anxiety to a level of calmness or close to a level of calmness where they could actually function appropriately and and be able to make you know wise decisions because when we're anxious or we have anxiety we can't really make you know constructive decisions because we're just too you know all our mind is all over the board and we're we're panicking you know so you know you know how can people when they suffer from anxiety because it's such a huge number of people who suffer from anxiety, you know, what are some things that they could do when it comes to changing their mindset to help them with anxiety? 
Absolutely, because I think um, to your point, mindsets um, become more fixed with fear, with anxiety. And uh, one of the things that that uh, I've learned in my training is, while it might sound or feel counterintuitive, oftentimes, if you think about the worst case scenario and just get it out there, mm -hmm. that's one way to kind of give yourself a little bit of relief. Because yeah. part of what builds that anxiety is not wanting to acknowledge something that could happen, mm -hmm. right? So I'm in a ship or on a ship in the ocean, that ship could sink. If I can just say that or think that as one possibility, then I've gotten the worst out of the way. And it then right. creates an opportunity. I think the what if question is also a fabulous question. Like I'm thinking right now about when your boss might call you into his or her office. Mm -hmm. And probably the first thing that would come to my mind is like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I'm in trouble. Yeah. Right? When in fact, the boss wanted to congratulate me on a project and give me a promotion, right? And yeah. it's interesting because until I have that experience, I'll probably be in the former. I'll probably be in the state where I'm nervous or afraid that I'm in trouble. And as I'm walking to the boss's office, if I can think about it, if I can just get that, that centimeter of chance to just say, well, what if it's not that? Right. Again, it just kind of, so long story short, for me, I think it's about acknowledging the fear or the anxiety or the frustration and right. being real with myself about that. Or if I'm speaking with someone else, being able to say that out loud is a possibility and how, because I think the anticipation also, you know, amplifies that anxiety. And if I can just get rid of it, release it, it just, it seems to help. It seems to open up a little bit more of a opportunity to maybe right. consider something different. Now, you know, I've, I've talked to uh, many people and, you know, even, even uh, yesterday, I spoke to a woman named Karen Hall from the Los Angeles Tribune. And she said a lot of times when she would, um, you know, go through things and even her, her clients, she would, uh, they would uh, repeat something in their, in their head, you know, something positive and they would repeat, repeat it over and over and over. And they would, it would be like an exercise that they would do on a daily basis when they were trying to get through something they were struggling with that was really heavy on their heart. And by doing that, it helped to change their mindset. Are, are you familiar with that? Or do you think that's a, a wise exercise or a good exercise? Absolutely. I think affirmations are a wonderful thing as long as they're your own and they link to um, the root issue of, you know, what you might be thinking about. And there's also a link to something that you mentioned earlier with regard to like the habit. When you do that over and over and over consistently over a period of time, you're actually forming a new habit. Right. And as you're forming new habits, then those are forming different neural pathways um, in your brain. And so, yeah, I definitely think she's onto something there. 100%, 100%. In fact, one of the handouts that I have in, in one of my courses is actually, um, it actually shows some examples of affirmations and then leaves space to actually, you know, put in your own. And I, oh, wow. I use them a lot and I got a whiteboard right here and I've got a lot of them written on the whiteboard. <laughs> so productive a lot of people I know do that also they have yeah, well, either a whiteboard or they use stickies and they have it posted on their walls or right where they could see it and every time they're either when they first walk into their office or they even like some people said even in their bathroom when they're getting ready in the morning they have mm -hmm. affirmations posted on their on their mirror so the first thing they see is something positive and it brings them a feeling of of joy, a feeling of po you know positivity, a, um, a motivational um, feeling that yes, I can do it. Yeah, you know today's going to be a great day. You know, and I, I think that's such a great thing. I, I like that idea a lot. I think when you see positive things, it immediately gives you a sense of joy and hope. And I think that hope goes a long way. Also, what do you I, think? I love it. I so I've got affirmations. I've got favorite quotes. I've got pictures of my children. So things that you know bring me joy. Link to that, I think, you know, kind of forcing the smile. Yeah. After a while, I just start laughing. You know, if I can remember to force the smile when I'm when I'm not feeling very um, happy, for example. Um, and I think gratitude. What when what you were when you were sharing what you were sharing, I thought, oh gosh, you know, Stacy, you're talking about gratitude. There's, I gotta say, dare I say the word always? There's always at least one thing I could be grateful for. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that I can even still take the next breath. Exactly. Um, 
So just writing down a few things that I'm grateful for every morning is one of my practices, right. you know, writing three, just three. Um, and I, and the longer it takes me to actually think of those things also gives me a cue about kind of where I am Yes, in my mental and emotional state as well. And at the same time, there's always something to be grateful for. And I think that is a sentence where I can use the word always. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, I, I, I created the gratitude and positivity journal and, you know, it's the littlest things in life. You know, we don't realize how valuable they are until they're taken away from us. And, you know, that's when it's too late. And that's why you should always focus on the now and really focus on the little things, you know, that like you take in your next breath. You know, there's beautiful grass outside when I look out the window or, you know, I can hear the birds sing. You know, people don't look at those things and really have gratitude. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about all people, but a lot of people. You know, it's just the littlest things that we are blessed with that if people really looked at it and said, wow, you know, I'm blessed to have this and I'm blessed to have that. Or, you know, my little dog greets me when I come out, you know, into the house, you know, just things like that, you know, it brings joy and it brings a sense of, of, of gratitude into your life. And then I think love and kindness kind of follows through with it. And then it gives you the motivation to want to move forward and want to, you know, do good things for yourself and others. 100%. 100%. I couldn't agree more. And that's why you'll see a lot of these post-it notes here on my desk, mm -hmm. um, in addition to my whiteboard and in addition to even the mirror in the bathroom. Um, I think for me, when something that I just feel really grateful for kind of spontaneously shows up, it's like to write it down is like that extra kind of, you know, yeah. act. So I love that you created a journal for that. I, I think it's really, really important. It's really, really important. Yeah. You know, my daughter, the other day, she wrote a post-it and she wrote how she, she was, um, she, she, she was so happy that I was in her life and she had, you know, she wrote something really sweet and I took that post-it and I just stuck it on my desk. So every day I would see it. And it's just uh, a reminder of, you know, how much that she loves me. And, and it's just a, a great, a great feeling when, you know, there are people in our lives that care about us or they recognize what we do and they appreciate it. And, you know, it, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I, I think that's what people have to look for, you know, when they're really, when they're, when they're trying, you know, mindset matters. And when you change your mindset and you start looking at all these little things and you start really focusing on all the positivity in your life, you know, it really, it can change your life dramatically. I think. 100%. I think what links to that for me quickly is, have you ever been in a situation where maybe you were looking for a new car? And you knew the make, you knew the model, you knew the color. Then all of a sudden you're driving down the highway or to the grocery store. You see that car. You see mm -hmm. that car more and more and more and more. And you never saw it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, happened to me before. That's definitely happened to me. And I know that that's something that happens on uh, in the brain, actually. it's I think it's called the reticular. Mm -hmm. Putting that aside, because I'm not a, a brain specialist. Um, right. I think it points to exactly what you're saying and why the gratitude kind of exercise or practice is so important because it helps to bring those things front and center in right. a way where maybe they were taking a back seat. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now, from the conversation we had today, what are some things that you really like to emphasize that you think are really important for people, you know, to help so people can understand why mindset matters and maybe some tools that people can focus on that will help the listeners really get themselves on, on a good frame of mind so they can start with, you know, changing their some things in their mindset and really helping themselves grow as an individual. Absolutely. So I think the biggest thing is just the term mindsets matter and just understanding that they do is a step in the right direction because then it opens the door to perhaps taking uh, thoughts that no longer serve us in a healthy way and being open to shifting them into things that are healthy. It's no different than exercising our body or if we're overweight, going on a diet. Why would we not also do that with regard to our mindsets and our emotions? Yes. Um, I think some of the tools we've talked about, it's great. That gratitude journal, awesome, awesome way to start and an easy way to start. Yeah. Maybe you have a dog. You mentioned um, a, a pet, having a pet uh, and the gratitude that you feel. Take the dog for a walk, get outside in the middle of the day. You can take five minutes to do something like that and just notice how that might shift some of, you know, what you might be feeling 
Um, I think the other part uh, around the affirmations is absolutely brilliant. That's definitely a tool. And then I think the last thing I'll mention is linked to the curiosity piece and how to reframe. Look, I get to decide, I get to choose, and I'm responsible for the kind of experience that I have in my life and in my business. Mm -hmm. That empowers me. That empowers me in such an amazing way. So how am I going to choose, maybe not to automatically get out of this more negative mood I'm feeling because this mindset that I'm that I'm having or experiencing is limiting me. We don't have to jump off the cliff. But how do yeah. I take at least the next step toward right. like a more positive experience and choose to do that for myself? So I think that's really important too. I love that. Now tell us about some of the services that you provide because you do a bunch of things. I do. So I'm definitely um, someone who uh, loves to coach. I think that's my sweet spot, if I may say. I love doing it because coaching for me um, creates a mirror experience. So it's not about one person coaching another. It's engaging in conversation in ways where we're bettering each other. And that's how I think about coaching. Um, I also facilitate groups and teams. I help them come together in ways that feel more meaningful and collaborative, um, doing a lot of the mindset work to see what might be holding them back in the group dynamic. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of my work, if not most, online at this point. So I have different online programs that I offer, which people can learn about through my LinkedIn profile or on my website. And um, yeah, I think the other thing that I want to share is you mentioned anxiety earlier, and I just did get my uh, mental health literacy certification as a coach because there's so much happening now in the mm -hmm. domains of anxiety and addiction mm -hmm and depression and trauma. Yes. Um, so I'm qualified now to deal with some of those things and help people who are undergoing some of those unfortunate circumstances um, for a little bit longer, help them actually start to get out of some of those situations where they feel stuck. Yeah, I, I love that because it, it's true. You know, you see an increase like it, there's always been depression, anxiety, you know, people living in fear. You know, th these are topics that have been here forever. But for some reason, you nowadays, I don't know if it's just because we're more aware, but it seems like the world has increased tremendously when it comes to anxiety, depression, you know, feelings of fear and panic. And, you know, that, you know, you see so many things, especially you see a lot of things on the media media. And I think that plays a role in people's emotions too. And, you know, I think we, we need help in, in that area. People need to know how to cope productively so they don't get into depression or they don't, don't, don't let anxiety take control of their lives. Because I've known people that have anxiety and they didn't even want to leave their home because they, they easily got anxious over the littlest things because they got to a point where they just couldn't cope with life anymore. So you don't want to get to that extreme. You want to be able to, you know, conquer the problem as soon as you start noticing the symptoms. And, you know, so I, I think that's great that you're doing that because it's, I, it's a really important cause and it, it's something that a lot of people need in, in today's society. 100%. And so I'm really grateful to the Institute of Coaching where I got the certification and they're affiliated with, um, Harvard and Harvard Medical, I'm really grateful to them for bringing this experience and education to coaching, to the coaching industry. Because right. to your point, it is, it is uh, all of these things, unfortunately, are increasing and uh, we need to find ways to help people and through that support ourselves in healthier ways too. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think if we can change our mindset and not focus on so much of the hate in the world and focus more on love and, and focus more on, on, you know, ways of exemplifying kindness and, and gratitude, you know, imagine that the drastic turnaround we could have in today's society, if we focused on those, you know, characteristics rather than, you know, some of the characteristics that people really tend to focus on a little too much, you know. Absolutely. It feels so simple and yet it is so hard. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah. my goodness. Now where yeah. can people find you if they want to find you and they need, you know, they want, you know, where can they find you and, and contact you and maybe uh, set up a, a call or a consultation or, you know, look at your website and get some help and so forth. Absolutely. Well, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. My Instagram handle is at your tailored wisdom using my last name, 
T A Y L O R E D. Your tailored wisdom or my tailored wisdom? No, your tailored wisdom. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Also, my website. I I uh, have a, um, a a company called Generon International, and so I have a website, GeneronInternational.com, all spelled out. You can learn about me there and some of my programs as well. I love it. I love it. Well, Thanks. this this has been amazing. You know, I I think today's session was great because you know you brought up a lot of things that I think are are very helpful because mindset does matter. It can you know it can get you out of the the toughest situations and you know if you and if you don't change your mindset, you could really hold yourself back from a lot of opportunities and a lot of great things in life. And and you don't want your your mindset to control your emotions also. You know because that happens a lot too. You see people you know with with negative mindset and it, and it just steers their emotions in in a in a negative way and then they're not able to grow they're they actually their emotions steer them more into an unhappiness state of mind rather than a happy state of mind so it's really important you know to really focus on your mindset and really focus on you know where you would love to be who would you love, the person you'd love to become and then you know work on different ways to achieve it through mindset so i i love what you're doing thank you so thank much you. Today's thank session. You. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful session. And you know, I love I can't wait to have you back on the show. So thank you so much for your time. And it's been it's been wonderful. Thank you, Stacy. Greatly appreciated. You have a great day. You too.